I V M. Hello, guys and girls. We are back with another fresh episode of the Millennial Athlete, a podcast of, for, and by the millennials. I am your host, Lokram Chandra, and I am co-host Tanvi Lard. Hi, Tanvi. How are you? You seem a little stressed today. No, not stressed. In fact, I was uh, watching the highlights of um, the excellent knock that RCB had yesterday against the KKR at the IPL, and it took me back to a conversation that I had with a friend post the match. You know, I asked him, "What are the first two words that come to your mind when you when you think of the IPL or or, or another you know sporting league like the IPL?" And uh, he said, "You know, the first two things that come to mind are uh, money and uh, fame." I mean, nothing to do with sport, but money and fame were his first two words. I mean, apart from that, also the parties, the glam. <laughs> we all have seen uh, the very famous show on Amazon. There's a certain show, Amazon on, based on cricket. I would not like to name the show, uh, but yes, you see the other side of these, you know, you know, fant- uh, of these leagues, and you know, you you tend to realize that you know they are living a kind of a lavish lifestyle during the course of those eight weeks. Yeah, totally. I mean, from a player's uh, perspective, I think this IPL has been pretty lackluster. To start with, there have been no fans, no spectators to edge them on during matches, and then, like you mentioned, the after parties, which are you know synonymous with the IPL and uh, such leagues, sporting leagues, are obviously not happening this year. And uh, also, the players are used to you know finishing a match. probably parting through the night and then catching a flight to another city the next morning which is also not happening so a uh, pretty lackluster ipl there but 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 on the you know on the flip side uh, this lifestyle can also sometimes get dangerous and you know difficult to sustain post your career because hey, you are not going to be 25 uh, during your whole career right at some point of time you are going to retire what next then I mean, Shlok. Now that you're mentioning it, uh, I remember watching this documentary called Broke, uh, and you know it was estimated that about 80% of the NFL players actually uh, get you know turned bankrupt within two years of retiring. So uh, players, I can understand. You know, when you have such a short-lived career, you want to maximize. You want you want the endorsements. You want the sponsorships. You want to be in the limelight and make all the money you can. And then sometimes it does get a bit dangerous because you get used to you know whether it's luxury cars, whether it's fancy brands or private jets. Um, you know the scale scale just keeps getting higher and higher. But uh, yes, what happens once you retire? A guest tonight on the show. is someone who has managed to do that pretty well i mean pretty well is an understatement he is obviously your current coach and you know i have traveled with him in the indian team uh, so our guest today on the show we we share a special connection uh, both tanvi and i share a very special connection with him we both have trained with him at some point of time in our lives and tanvi is actually training uh, with him right now our uh, guest is none other than uh, anup sridhar anup sridhar is a former olympian has been one of the best ever men singles players india has produced and now you know post his career he is uh, the head coach at the anup sridhar badminton academy which is in bangalore also he is the head coach of the avad warriors in the premier badminton league so yeah i mean tanvi anything you want to add on that totally i think um, he's he was one of india's uh, you know number one men singles players during his peak he was known to be um, emotional on court he was known to be a fighter extremely attacking and of course um, young player turned coach uh, we would love to hear his perspectives on some of the things that we were uh, talking about a couple of minutes uh, earlier uh, so guys and girls on the other side of the break we have olympian anup shridhar with us yes trust me everyone you don't want to miss it you guys are listening to the millennial athlete with tanvi and shlok we'll be right back Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So it's been a great week on the network, as it almost always is. Let me give you a couple of highlights that you should definitely check out. Chiki Sarkar was on this round on me with Gauri Devi. They had a great conversation. I think you will really enjoy that. Shlok Ramachandran of our new show, Millennial Athlete, who guested on one of our older shows, Football Shirt Ball. He's a big football fan, in addition to being a professional athlete. So I think it's a really interesting connection, and uh, they had a great conversation about football just generally. Nankari, our new show about Indian food, hosted by Sadaf and Arshit. 
talk about laddus this week and basically you know how awesome they are it's diwali week and i think that's an apt conversation for them to have on the wire talks podcast siddharth bhatia has a great conversation with dilan mohan gray about his work on bad boy billionaires specifically around the vijay malia episode definitely check out the conversation if you want to know more about that and finally let me recommend the edges and sledges cricket podcast this week they take a look back at the ipl 2020 they go over the final delhi versus mumbai and how that played out and they also create their dream ipl 2020 fantasy team do check that out i think you'll enjoy that as well and with that let's get you back to your show welcome back guys you're listening to the millennial athlete with tanvi and shlok uh, as promised earlier in our break we've got anup sridhar uh, as our guest today hi anup how are you i'm good shlok thank you for having me here tanvi please don't be a little upset today i know he's your coach uh, but you know please uh, you know leave the coach uh, student relationship out and you know be a little open today i know you can be intimidating but shlok talking of intimidating um you were the one who was saying uh, i am you were you were uh, you know talking about your first memory of anup uh, as a 16 year old walking into the prakash padukone academy and um seeing anup shridhar play oh, as yes. men singles number 1 oh yes yes i i, I can't ever forget that. i don't know if anup bhai yeah, remembers that i uh, being a 16 year old i walked in walked into the prakash padukone academy and uh, there was uh, you know anup shridhar hitting uh, smashes at 200 km per hour and uh, you know I was we, I, all of us juniors were so intimidated uh, to go and talk to him, uh, but uh, the it, it's come to a good cycle now. From then, uh, you know, he became a very good senior, and then obviously he was traveling uh, with us in the Indian team, and now he's a he's a good mentor slash friend. So it's come to a circle now. So I'm not intimidated anymore now. That was only on the court, man. <laughs> Intimidation <laughs> was only on the court. Certainly not off court. I hope. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Anup, we start off. Um, you know, Shlok and I were just talking about uh, something prior to the break, and um, you know, the financial aspect of um, sport in general, uh, pro sport. Um, you know, athletes. If you if you if you look at the IPL, you know, things like player parties and an extravagant lifestyle is something that's synonymous with athletes during their uh, playing career. And of course, because we have a very short-lived career, we try to maximize, um, you know, financially. We try to get the best we can during that that career. But sometimes it can prove to be dangerous because you get used to that lifestyle, and you know, once you're once you're uh, once you retire, it's sometimes difficult to sustain. Um, having made the transition from being a player to now a coach, life after sport, uh, do you have anything to say on those lines? So I mean, my entire career, um, I'm not sure I was extremely, um, I don't know, flamboyant or flashy or any of those things. With I mean, I don't know, maybe some people would disagree, but I, I don't think I was particularly uh, flashy or or anything like that. With, uh, with 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 maybe a couple of exceptions. Uh, one would always be that I I always liked and I wanted to have the the newest pair of uh, Asics uh, Gel Kayano running shoes. So this was one. Uh, the other was uh, food. so i always wanted to to make sure i eat uh, the best possible food because i always felt i mean it's it's going inside my body so uh, you know i want the, the best food from the best place uh, uh, you know as 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 far as possible um so so having moved uh, in in into coaching obviously around 5 five, 5 uh, five years ago or so um so there is a bit of a change uh, in 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 what um, you know in my lifestyle but most of it is actually just to do with 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 how busy i am uh, and there is honestly not much mind space uh, to think too much about uh, i don't know the, the nicest clothes or the nicest shoes or i wasn't too much into that stuff in any case there's only the shoes and i like cars these are the only two things i like uh, cars are a little bit of an expensive uh, <laughs> uh, sort of obsession but then um, these are my my two things i i don't really have too many other things that i i i honestly i value too much i don't think i value things so much Uh, I mean, yes. One of the reasons why I actually quit uh, or you know, took an indefinite sabbatical from the sport early this year was just because of the fact that you know, even being 32, 33, or 40 in the world, uh, there wasn't uh, any funding, uh, and you know sure. that is why you know I didn't want to put in my money and you know continuously go and play. Sure. Uh, so, you know, what what is the kind of advice you would give uh, to the young 18 year olds, 19 year olds? You know, you know how to plan their careers moving on. uh to be honest man i think you you are still extremely young yourself uh, i respect your 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 decision and your call i mean everybody finds their own path uh, fair enough 
but to somebody just just uh, sort of in the 18 19 20 uh, uh, range right now uh, the main thing i would say is to to try to become um, as self sufficient as possible in as short a time as possible so there's there's a variety of ways you can do this um so so for example i i've i've lived in in denmark uh, for a year and i've played there two seasons uh, and tanvi knows this too but uh, uh, people in i mean players in europe um, find some uh, sort of part time job or the other to find a way to 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 pay for uh, you know their training and to 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 be able to pursue i mean play international tournaments like you said and all of these these are all very expensive things to to do um so there are possibilities uh, in in india as well i mean the most uh, common one would be coaching um it it is boring after several hours of your own training to get back on the court and actually teach somebody how to to hold a racket or something like that but um, i mean honestly man if 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 you want to do it you know if you have to do it you you have to do it um so i mean uh, apart from trying to to find a way to become just self sufficient as far as your your daily monthly expenses go as far as training fees and um uh, you know wherever you're living and and food and things like that i think that will also uh, give give uh, every kid's uh, parents a lot of confidence that potentially they are on the right track um if this is possible uh, then i mean I, i would think that would be the first goal uh, just to add one more uh, uh, sort of small small thing is yes i mean that the trend right now and uh, everybody pretty much plays 15 18 20 tournaments a year this is extremely expensive to do and uh, i mean we all know that right uh, it's an extremely expensive thing to do um if 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 you start maybe with with a slightly smaller goal and maybe play a few fewer tournaments and try to to get to a higher round in in those tournaments uh, it's easier said than done i know uh, but if if that can be the goal instead um i mean potentially you end up being uh, i think uh, a lot more efficient with your time with your travel and you know with your matches i think too often uh, i have fallen into the trap of playing a lot of tournaments without being uh, physically uh, where i needed to be or even fit actually physically fit even uh, i think i have fallen t- into that trap too many times and i see a lot of uh, kids uh, sort of following suit unfortunately like you mentioned you know you spent a couple of years in denmark and uh, the danish league of course is something that uh, we we indians sometimes participate in just to you know on that little extra but that's a system which um, you know it has been in place for years and um, the players who 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 want to play professional badminton are part of that system so you know you play the leagues you get match practice you make your money and then you also compete professionally um we of course in india have have the premier badminton league which has been a great start but uh, do you think there's a possibility of a year long league in in india to just you know help the sport get more professional and you know a lot more kids will just consider taking badminton up professionally i actually think that that leagues are are going to have to be the future of badminton in india uh, we all know public sector employment is is just it's it's almost non existent right now uh, in my time if if you could be uh, of course it was not extremely easy but if you were among the top let's say eight men singles players or or something like that you would get a, a you know job with one of the oil companies and uh, you know if you're in the top 30 even you would get some public sector employment uh, you know or the other uh, this is completely dried up public sector entities themselves are struggling to survive uh, my own former employer is is actually up for sale right bpcl is up for sale now yeah yeah um leagues have to step in and 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 take this uh, this responsibility because otherwise all the good work done in indian badminton over the last maybe 10 15 years it's all going to go down the drain um because more and more and more players are taking up the game by uh, you know i mean unfortunately uh, uh, you know shlok uh, is 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 actually an example of that if you can get so high in world ranking in the world ranking list and be so competitive in india and win tournaments in india and you still can't really find funding after a while i think uh, you know it it it's it, it should be taken really really seriously by our uh, by our national association uh, because i think they have the capacity to do it pbl is great as a pr event um, as a way to catch eyeballs and to to um, i don't know uh, i'm not sure how much it's it's accomplishing even there to be honest but uh, we need a, a a system like like denmark has like the bundesliga in germany 
Yeah. Uh, we need a, a really strong league system in in India. Obviously, the problems are enormous. There are huge challenges. There's no doubt about this. Denmark is a tiny country with a tiny population and a largely homogenous population also. Here, you have a world within a country. You have all kinds of people, all kinds of opinions, traditions, cultures. Uh, so it's a much much harder job. But um, I I really hope that it's uh, uh, you know it, it it's it's sort of seen to and it actually gets done. uh because i think uh, the leagues have to uh, step in and 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 take this this place you know the the top um, let's say 250 players or 500 players maybe 500 actually across age groups uh, 500 players of of india should be across age category should be able to be uh, uh, able to pay their training fees their equipment costs their uh, traveling costs at least within india they, this this will have to have to happen otherwise we'll see uh, a massive decline of of interest in badminton because more and more fantastic talented players will quit the game and uh, you know word gets round uh, you know you can't get employment it's it's only the top 3 or 4 or even 2 or 3 uh, right at the top that make uh, you know big money uh, everybody else is 95% below them uh, this won't last uh, very long at all so we 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 must find a way to uh, to have a national year long uh, year long league with uh, exactly like the danish system they have i think 11 divisions or something like that uh, we could start with 3 uh, you know and and slowly build i mean we have the the numbers for for several divisions for sure you know and there's interest uh, there's corporate interest in badminton as well i think uh, i absolutely think it's the uh, it, it 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 must be the future whether it it will be or not i guess uh, you know we'll all see together i mean yeah on that um... so this is the whole difference with the danish league is that it is actually for the development of the danish players and there are only three or four outstation players in the whole team Absolutely. of 14 whereas in the Absolutely. premier badminton league the whole rule is that you just need to play one indian in the five tie so there is no particular development so so in my case i was in the top 45 for the past four years and i played the premier badminton league only once uh, okay. but in the danish or the bundesliga all the you know the a listers the b listers and the c listers are playing those leagues so i think somewhere down the line we need to make a league so that there will be development of indian players and okay you want to have foreign players just one or two maybe in it i think that yeah, is absolutely. the way absolutely no absolutely i couldn't agree more but i think the objectives of these two leagues are completely different i think the objective of pbl was to 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 bring uh, uh, attention of the sport and to bring the sport to a much wider audience in in, in india initially Yeah. Uh, there is no doubt that I would absolutely like to see a league uh, where we we follow absolutely the Danish system. You know, you you have a maximum of two foreigners in a team. You can have as many foreigners as you want actually, but they can only play in two matches in every tie. Um, it it it's. I mean, I've I've been the coach of the Sara team now for for five years. Uh, you know, all through PBL actually. Um, and uh, as a team, actually, we we push uh, to not have that uh, two Indians per. two indian participation per tie reduced to one which happened i think two years ago uh, I, but unfortunately i think we were the only team that that actually pushed up uh, against it and we were easily uh, you know overruled um so i think um, um, you know I, i i couldn't agree more uh, we have to 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 have these leagues to to primarily develop and promote indian players i think that is absolutely the need of the hour um, you know we have fantastic talent here we have a real chance to uh, you know to exploit that talent maybe over the next uh, 15 20 years and 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 i mean we've come a long way in the last maybe uh, 12 maybe 15 years um but i think we can uh, where I, i india can dominate world badminton almost the way china did for a very long time we have the capacity but there's so much of work to be done uh, before we uh but i'm an optimist um and 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 you know i i hope it gets done i i couldn't agree more yeah i think from an administrative point of view there needs to be a lot more done and uh, hence you know you could see a cycle coming up absolutely well uh, anup um, hmm. i don't know if you're aware but uh, uh, if if you try g- getting across to shlok between 9 am and 1 pm uh, you know every day it's it's pretty much impossible and uh, sometimes i ask him you know you're not training what are you doing so he's tracking the stock market uh, and he's been investing uh, quite heavily so i i i don't know 
uh but but that's one thing that that i have wondered i mean sometimes players um either the money comes in quickly and you know you don't know how to handle it and you know financial literacy or investing these are things concepts that i don't see a lot of players being very educated about um do you think that that needs to be that you know it needs to be uh, players need to be made aware during their career um so what i was getting at was um it would be great if our players could be taught uh, financial literacy i think it's it's absolutely the need of the hour uh, but but players making uh, silly and unwise financial decisions is is something that happens across sports um i don't think it's uh, um you know uh, specific to badminton at all um unfortunately the reason that happens is we we, we don't pursue our education very uh, very far um you know at all compared to to a regular um, uh, you know a, re- a regular individual um, especially in india i think a post graduate degree is um, fairly common nowadays and uh, uh, all of us i mean at least in in my case let me speak for myself uh, i even got my undergrad degree i think just to have the degree i don't even remember what i studied or i have no clue what i studied honestly <laughs> you know so <laughs> my focus was yeah, completely in badminton and and yeah and this is the reason right this is why we 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 make some unwise and not so good decision fortunately i am a son of two bankers uh, public sector bankers even so i am financially typically at least fairly conservative uh, there are things even now like food um, and cars that uh, i like to perhaps uh, maybe splurge on a little bit especially food um, but but then like i said uh, i'm i'm i mean i'm i'm not being extremely modest here but i i i think i'm fairly smart with 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 uh, with, with my money i think but but yeah i mean it it would be great if it could be taught but to be honest we have um, far bigger challenges out there to to sort of tackle first i think we have to have everybody earn some money first and i, I think initially yeah. it must be in an a, a, a country wide a national league uh we can have state leagues you know there's so much of interest in the states to hold uh, uh, you know league there's so much of interest in karnataka in tamil nadu i think maharashtra tried for a few years but perhaps it it sort of ran out of steam after a little bit of time but uh this is where a national association state associations uh, you know they all have to step in and 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 back these leagues uh, uh you know um, i i really think uh, we have to find a way for our, our players to to start making some serious money and um, perhaps with administration also uh, i i know that bi has put out an ad uh, uh, for a ceo uh, get some professionals in there get some more uh, endorsement money coming in and uh, uh, you know let's share it with the players i think players have to get rich i mean i couldn't agree more i mean that is the need of the hour all yeah. right so i think on that note let's take our first break guys and girls um, on the other side of the break we're going to probably uh, talk to anup as the next gen coach so stay tuned you're listening to the millennial athlete with tanvi and shlok we'll be right back pesh e khidmat hai aapki shaan mein hamare anjuman se hi i am sadaf and i am arshit khane ka itihas economics policy psychology sab hai menu pe only on the nankali podcast every wednesday sirf ivm podcast app ya website par ya fir jahan se bhi aap apne podcast sunte ho Welcome back guys and girls you're listening to the millennial athlete with Tanvi and Shlok uh, we have we still have Anup Sridhar with us Anup uh, now uh, segment 2 where we are going uh, to is very close to my heart uh, because you know even I am uh, a very young coach now and you know, I am just mentoring a couple of you know junior national girls over here and you've done that uh, transition successfully how's the whole transition been like from an absolute elite player to now becoming uh, probably one of the best coaches in India um so i mean firstly thank you for saying that i'm not sure i, I deserve it yet but i'll uh, i'll i'll do whatever i can to 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 sort of uh, deserve it soon but yeah so for me the hardest thing about uh, transitioning from a player to a coach um you know it was it was uh, the fact that uh, you know especially as a player and as a singles player uh, you only have yourself to to sort of uh, worry about to um, to figure out solutions for uh, and all of a sudden you have um, many other players now who who depend on you to to help them through uh, whatever issue no i mean it, it it could be something to do with um, um, you know maybe fitness or movement or strategy or tactical or whatever it is 
um so all of a sudden mentally you take on a really big load um i i to be honest when i started coaching i wasn't uh, i wasn't very very um, sure how how good or um you know how helpful i can be um but i started coaching with 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 honestly just a few uh, basic things in my mind that um, i i hope i mean tanvi can answer actually uh, i hope i've i've been able to maintain the first is uh, you know you must no matter what leave your ego at home um i i hope i wasn't very arrogant or anything like that as a player i, I was never meaning to be um but but even if you were or you have to leave your ego at home if 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 you're a coach you are there uh, you know to coach the player as as uh, our former coach tom used to say tom john you are there to serve the player you are not there to serve yourself or any any of those things you are there to serve the player and you must do everything in your power to make sure you are able to to do that there are several things that are out of your control as well as a coach but everything within your control um and and within your influence you 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 must do um the the one of the one of the main things that that that's been on my mind uh, uh, you know that was on my mind rather uh, you know when i decided to get into coaching uh, was i i have i've had a, a reasonably all right career um but i've made so many mistakes in it uh, you know i've made mistake after mistake like i just said i've played several tournaments without being fit i've ended up getting injured that takes so long to recover from um if if i can help um uh you know with with all of my students uh, you know by sharing my experiences uh, help them avoid those mistakes um from for me at least that is maybe the biggest uh, um that 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 will give me the most amount of happiness uh you know if they make new mistakes i'm really happy with that but not the ones that i've made and since i've made so many of them there aren't very many left actually to be honest so so if i can find a way to ensure my players don't make the same mistakes i've made uh, i i would be really really happy with that so you know we often joke about the stereotypes uh, surrounding millennials today i mean we're on our phones a lot yeah. we get bored easily yeah. we, we want to become world champion yeah. in a month um right. having to deal with the whole bunch of millennials um, how how do you deal with us <laughs> um so so see i mean um it it is true uh, you know everybody wants to become um, you know a champion really really quick everybody wants results really quick um I mean, look. I mean, everybody wants that, right? There's, there's nothing wrong in wanting it as long as um, you know you can you can listen to 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 somebody who's gone through it before and perhaps uh, maybe um, can can help you find that a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of patience or or whatever it is. But um, uh, you know, it's 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 the easiest thing for me to say. In my time, it was like this, and we were like this, and we were so unbelievably focused, and we were perfect. We weren't. nobody before my generation was perfect either none of us were or or will ever be perfect we all have our own sets of challenges to deal with i think you guys have tons more uh, uh, you know amounts of pressure um, you know to 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 actually uh, sort of deal with uh, whether it is pressure of, i don't know from social media or whatever actually on that point uh, tanvi you need to teach me how to use uh, instagram and to sure, sure, that sure, idea sure. yeah <laughs> okay um i have no idea how to use those also but i'm assuming there's so much of pressure stemming from i don't know i have x amount of followers but i want this or somebody else has y amount of followers and uh, you know it, it it's the easiest thing like i said for me to just say in my time we were so much better and you guys are uh, so useless or something that's absolutely not true there's several more tournaments that you guys are inevitably forced to play nowadays it it is easy to say play only eight tournaments ten tournaments here but that's not how it works right it's not so simple to to actually do that um i think it's important to to try to understand what 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 people go through uh, i i try as as you know to 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 be a coach only on court uh, not off court uh, and i try to understand what 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 people go through because um uh, no, i mean no no reference to anybody or uh, absolutely nothing like that i'm very happy with everybody who trained me uh but i didn't have a lot of that when 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 i was growing up uh and it would really really have helped me uh so if if i can try to understand and if i can't figure out a solution i can't but if i can at least attempt to understand what somebody is going through hopefully that that's at least uh, that's going some of the way to uh you know to helping a player figuring a solution for it uh, i think 
especially uh, with the people like you and ajay i think it's something that uh, you know we jointly have to do yeah, if it, it yeah. can't just be a one way street it has yeah. to be something that that we jointly do yeah yeah you know like you mentioned um, since we're so exposed as, as a generation we are we, like instagram and facebook everything you know we can see what victor axelson is doing in in his training sessions we can see what momota is doing in his training sessions so we are extremely exposed and sometimes when uh when we end up watching their videos or we end up watching watching them play live uh you know we tend to give them a bit too much respect and that's something you've always said you know don't idolize your um absolutely. idolize them to a point where when you have to play against them you're actually going to freeze absolutely i mean uh, while i while i played i always used to um, actually idolize our current bws president uh, paul eric and to be honest the main reason was that he had retired uh, you know so i'm never going to play against him Uh, i would say this to everybody uh, you know don't idolize anybody who's playing right now what if you play them tomorrow or pick somebody in a different event if if you if you must or a different sport ideally actually um, you know uh, because it it's so difficult you know um, uh, look i started playing international senior tournaments from 2000 uh, the end of 2001 2002 uh, onwards and 2003 onwards i was on the the indian team um and i remember uh, you know some sometimes i mean i, I came up against uh, hafiz for example in the 2005 all england um and i think he had won the all england uh, a year or two before or something like that um i remember i lost something like 15 8 15 and i came out of the the court thinking what the hell he actually wasn't that good at all uh, he was, he was good no doubt he was good but not like what i had made up uh, you know made him out to be in in my head i thought he'll hit at 1500 kilometers per hour he'll he'll every stroke will be uh, you know a fake and i will look so stupid on the court and i mean some of that might have happened but but not much at all you know we we end up giving people way too much credit and if you can't even think uh, mentally if you can't go onto the court thinking i'm going to win this match how will you ever stand any chance at all so uh, my advice to everybody watching actually across sport would be don't idolize anybody that you might potentially come up against you know in a match because it it's just a recipe for disaster the first time i played zofik i should have beaten him in 2006 in the asian games i lost 28 26 21 18 or something like that and uh, i remember coming out of the court feeling so proud of myself and uh, you know gopi cut me right down to size uh, and he told me what the hell you know you you could have won that and uh, you're actually out here smiling and laughing with Tanev and Rupesh uh, don't you have any shame you're playing for the country and i remember like from feeling up here i went like uh, i think underground or something like that you know i felt so bad that uh, he said you couldn't even win a game you know uh, and that was true you give people too much respect and it's 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 a huge uh, sort of obstacle to climb if you play against them yeah i think i remember uh, yeah a particular situation with anup uh, and this, i think we were, we were at the australian open uh, in the quarter finals we were playing our fellow we were playing our fellow seniors uh, and you know we were leading uh, the whole third game and we lost that and for about 10 minutes i was a little quiet but then after that you know i was my normal myself goofing around and then i remember anu calling me and telling me that you know what the hell you know why are you goofing around don't you understand the magnitude of the match you've lost today you could have pro- if i would have probably won that match i would have played the asian games i just didn't realize that but anu probably had realized that then he just cut me down and you know that is one thing which stuck to my head after that you know that you need to you know even though they are the, they are your seniors don't respect them to a limit that you know you go and say bhaiya bhaiya and you don't actually play you know to your potential yeah i mean i'm i'm, I'm sorry about it but i only meant it with, with a good intention <laughs> no, it, was, it was actually good <laughs> there, was, there, was only, <laughs> there was only good intentions there it just seemed to me after, like while well, i was watching the match that that i mean you you and arjun were were just playing better and uh, uh i i was just surprised that that you were okay with it so quickly yeah that i mean that, 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 you, is, that you yeah. didn't win i was just surprised that you were so quickly you were okay with it yeah i mean i should and have been a little been. upset also <laughs> yeah yeah okay um, so anup uh, now that you are a coach uh, you know this is for all those young coaches you know who just started coaching and you know, what strikes you first in a player and what is uh the one thing that you know you're looking for in a player right i mean it is not in terms of skill just just attitude yeah. honestly it's exactly what you just said attitude and the main thing the main part of attitude is how interested are you actually 
uh, I think everything begins begins from then. Look, obviously, you can't get a 15 year old to pick up the racket the first day and have the right attitude and still find success in badminton. Of course, there are things that uh, you know beginners have to go through, intermediate players have to go through, but um, the, the bulk of the players I coach, uh, I coach right now are are professionals, uh, elite elite level athletes, and uh, the first thing that strikes me, the first thing that I look for, and the most important thing I feel is how interested really are you? Everybody, if you ask anybody, everybody will say, I want to be world champion or I want to be Olympic gold medalist or I want to be whatever, all England champion or something like that. Uh, but if, if, if potentially you sit that person down and explain to them uh, what that will potentially entail, you know, all of these things you will have to do and then you may have a chance to... To maybe medal at these events you're talking about, you'll have to do all of these, and you might have, may have a 10% chance of success or a 2% chance of success. So I don't know what the percentages are, to be honest. Um, if somebody at the end of that can tell you, great, that that's fantastic, I, I, I want to go for it. I mean, that that's that, that's what you're looking for, uh, you know, as a coach. Uh, if you can explain to somebody how difficult something is going to be, and they're still just as enthused and just as uh, you know, just the same amount of josh, uh, then, then, then that's somebody who, who, who's at the very least, they're going to give it their absolute best. And as a coach, I think there's nothing more you can ask from, from a player other than absolute 100% effort. Um, everything else is, is honestly, it's your job. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's perfect. And that, that, that's golden advice yeah. for uh, all those young co- coaches. Also, Anup, uh, I remember when we were in season one of the Millennial Athlete and uh, I would constantly ask Tanvil let's do a recording and she would always be that, you know, I have, I have a Zoom Zoom class with Anu and I would ask Ajay also, what is going on? I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you must have come up with something innovative during the lockdown. And But how was the whole experience like uh, during the lockdown and uh, being a coach and, you know, trying to you know, keep these less hardworking kids into, uh, you know, keep working hard? <laughs> Yeah, so the first thing was was actually, uh, you know, it 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 was just that, um, um, I mean, initially we were told it's a two week lockdown, right? In uh, March, I think around the fourteenth or something like that. Um, I mean, I think by the twenty third, fourth or something like that. Uh, you know, I, I figured this is going to be much longer than uh, two weeks. It could be a it could be a month more. It could be two months more. Who knows how long this is going to be. Uh, and so much of work we had done with, uh, you know, all of these, uh, 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 you know, trainees that, that put in so much of work. Um, and I really, really didn't want to see that going away. So, so I, I, I immediately figured we'll do some sort of, uh, online fitness class or something like that. It, it actually helped me get a little bit fit as well. Uh, you know, pretty much through the day you have nothing to do, but just that one hour of, of, you know, of, of fitness. Uh, I have another friend, uh, another trainer, uh, his name is Vinod, I think, I'm not sure if you guys know him. Uh, he's become a physical trainer now. He was a, a decathlon athlete in, in, in his career. Uh, he was doing some online classes as well. So I would do our class, I think at, uh, was it two to three or one to two, I think it was. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, I would do his class later in the evening to get ideas on what to add in our session. Uh, I watched a ton of YouTube videos, uh, you know, on what we can do, no equipment, uh, no space, very limited space and no equipment. What can you do? Uh, I think it helps, helped a lot of us, uh, stay sane, yeah. uh, you know, a couple of months, two and a half months, if we did nothing, uh, it would have been a tough time because uh, I've always believed, you know, sound body, sound mind. Um, and if, 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 if you, um, uh, you know, I don't want to get into some controversy here. I, I don't think uh, mental health is unimportant or something like that. But uh, uh, but, but but I think if, if if you can find a way to 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 exercise and to to be physically engaged for for even an hour a day, I think uh, uh, you know some somehow we found a way to do it. Uh, I thought there would be four or five people initially. It ended up becoming I can't remember something like sixty five students yeah, at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of my friends, uh, actually joined in, uh, guys who haven't trained ever, a couple of them got really fit, lost so much of weight, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, all around it was, it was, it was a, it was a fun learning time, a uh, tough time, but, uh, you know, it's something everybody's going through and you, you, you make the best of it. 
uh, thankfully we were able to do that yeah i think we were all getting creative using uh, water bottles uh, for dumbbells and uh, using chairs oh, for <laughs> so uh, but but Lundy. like you said it was yeah i mean uh, or even tricep dips we using chairs and sofas oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. but uh, it was something to look forward to you know we go we got to see our yeah. friends uh, for that one hour every yeah. day and a little bit of banter and a little bit of sweat was doing us all good yeah but uh, on that note i think let's take our second break guys and girls uh, we have a small throwback uh, lined up for you in in our last and final segment which is anup the player so stay tuned uh, you're listening to the millennial athlete with tanvi and shlok how many times have you motivated yourself to improve your sleep or lose weight or be more productive how many times have you failed hi my name is ashtin doctor Tune into my show The Habit Coach podcast where we focus on creating small tiny habits to improve your life instead of those big impossible tasks. So make listening to me a habit every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com or on your favorite podcasting app. Welcome back guys and girls you are listening to The Millennial Athlete with Tanvi and Shlok uh, we still have Anup Sridhar with us. Anup, uh, we are going to talk a bit about uh, Anup Sridhar, the player. You, you know, earlier said that you had an all right career. You know, stop being modest, please. I mean, you've had more than an all right career. Uh, you know, every athlete dreams to become an Olympian, and I think you did that. And I've seen you playing at your best. And guys, you know, he's one of definitely one of the finest players I've ever seen play. I mean, I remember one thing though. I mean, you you always uh, you know kept your emotions on your sleeve. And I remember you know once you were uh, at the Bangalore All India tournament, uh, you know you were playing a younger player. uh and uh, you won that match you won that match uh, but you were let's say you were a little annoyed with your performance and you were not very satisfied and just before the handshake you just took the racket and you broke it with your thighs uh and uh, and you know i was i was up watching the match and i'm like damn anup must be really pissed with his performance i mean would you like to you know talk about uh, you know your emotional intelligence on court and the whole concept of emotional intelligence because you know we got players like nick kirios uh you know who put their hearts on their sleeves uh, but back in the days when you know you know you obviously you've grown up seeing prakash sir as a prakash sir beyond bog being uh, the epitome of gracefulness and you know not you know shouting or anything so it was it's a guy it's, it's a bit of an extreme right, right. now right i mean uh, fairly early in my in my in my playing days i i figured that um, i will probably never be able to match uh, prakash sir's um, <laughs> calmness and coolness <laughs> and, and all of that on court i fairly early in my career i figured that out uh for a, for whatever reason i mean uh, i don't know uh, i i used to be a lot more uh, short tempered as a player of course uh, but then you know uh, i'm i'm a father now and uh, that nothing teaches you patience like 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 that does um so i mean that particular match was uh, it was it was it was something it was a match i should have won in two games it went to the third set um I wasn't particularly fit uh, then, and uh, uh, I was playing against a guy in the final who I really didn't want to lose to. And I figured that since this went to three games and my my body won't recover and I'm I'm done for in the final. That was the anger of. I mean, next day's anger me, I broke the racket actually. <laughs> you know, but um, but but yeah, I mean, uh, in many of my matches, especially growing up, uh, I've always found that. Um, you know shouting a little bit to pump myself up uh, you know it, it it did help when i played a lot of international matches um, you know i would always um, sometimes you need to almost you know almost make stuff up in your mind to to get you fired up and to to get you really charged up because um, you know remember when when i started playing international tournaments of course in 2001 gopi had won the all england but you know honestly apart from him absolutely nobody was able to come anywhere close to beating anyone in the top uh let's say even 25 uh or even more actually uh, you know if you put in the top, top 30 or 35 then it was a big thing um you know so I, i would go into a match being told by various people and even several teammates that you know this guy you're playing against has beaten that fellow in this tournament who beat this japanese in this tournament who beat linden or took him linden to three games in some other tournament and by a 5 6 degrees of separation i was playing against lindan plus chongwe multiplied by tofik or something like that um, <laughs> I, i would find that mentally so difficult to to get over 
yeah you know so i mean if if you go if you go through anybody's uh, results that way best wins everybody is unbelievably impressive right uh, it's it's what you do on the day uh, you know that uh, you know only that counts um, so i i used to find that a lot of the self sort of pumping myself up and 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 shouting was was actually directed frankly at at, at myself it it wasn't directed at anybody else not an opponent or an umpire or a line judge or nobody a lot of it was just telling myself to 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 stay in the moment and to not worry about what somebody else has uh, achieved previously or or anything like that so um, uh, so that was the, the the reason behind it but but yeah i have a few incidents i think in in my career <laughs> which uh, i would even like to forget but a lot of people keep reminding me so so i am not able to forget it <laughs> <laughs> but i think uh, like especially in tennis we get to see these you know raw personalities whether it's serena williams or uh, a couple of weeks ago we saw djokovic you know let out let let off some steam um sure. but i i think i mean yes there is this whole concept of emotional intelligence being in control of your emotions at all times but i mean as athletes and even from a fans perspective i would love to see the the you know the trolls on twitter the next day after jokovic hits you know hits a line umpire so i think right. emotion is is a part of being an athlete and instead of absolutely. bottling it up uh, you know just let off steam at some at some time absolutely i mean i i absolutely agree um you know um, it 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 is certainly important to 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 have respect um, you know towards the the, the chair umpire the, the tournament referee the line judges all of them are uh, are doing a job there and uh, you know without them uh, we wouldn't be able to 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 do what we do either right of course they couldn't do what they do without without players also i mean it, it it's a a very complementary sort of relationship but um, uh i think we we perhaps uh, uh gone too far in badminton in curtailing emotion and uh, uh you know in sort of being too robotic and and you know you can't even have 5 seconds after a rally to i mean if you've played a really great rally and you've you've you've, you've lost it uh you know there should be just just a few seconds to to at least emotionally recover before you start the next point i i think some amount of uh, you know almost b regulation is is required in in you know in that regard um but um i mean uh, i think as the leagues uh, have showed us right uh, in the pbl you have girish nato telling all the players to shout as much as possible yeah they yeah. actually instruct us coaches to tell players you shout more and yeah. you know we yeah. want more antics and entertainment i mean i yeah. I, i don't know why that some portion of that uh, you know we don't want uh, an ipl type situation in an all england or a world championships either but uh, you know we need emotion i think tennis is a, a fantastic sport to to learn from uh, you know rather than uh, um, sort of uh, being jealous of 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 the sport or uh, uh, or anything like that we sh- we should take our cues from them uh, i think they've figured it out to a large extent and uh, um, you know we don't have to we just have to to sort of uh, follow what they've done I mean yes then we I mean you remember you know when we play you know these long rallies and we are in tournaments and we play this huge uh, 60 stroke rally and then we are just trying to take a breather and the chair umpire like play 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 exactly. play and I'm like delay the match yes. I'm like bhai saas to lene de bhai 65 strokes yeah. ka rally kya hai matlab yeah. yeah. app yeah. miss kiya hai net pe thoda to emotion hai to play <laughs> yes. play play shuru ho jata hai uh, but yeah I mean uh, that's uh, it's, a, it's a very good view to you know take it forward and hopefully badminton can uh, you know take something uh, take the good stuff from tennis uh, sure. so anup uh, you know before we end this uh, we have this very short game now we are playing with all of these guests uh, so tanvi and myself will give you five words on the turn by turn okay. whatever thing whatever pops up in your mind first okay shoot okay that could be a bit dangerous but sure <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start with the easy ones. So, uh, training. Training 400 meters. I don't know why. Kantir <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, Kantir was saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, Beijing Olympics. That's uh, honestly anger. Okay. Um, ideal trainee. Um, I mean that's a tough one, but um, honestly, maybe Shrikar, actually. Shrikar. Oh, I thought it. I thought, I thought it might be Tanvi. I thought I didn't think it might be Tanvi, but um, that, that would sound like I'm. Um, yeah. <laughs> good, 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 good. Playing to you guys too, too much. 
<laughs> to all our listeners uh, i think our listeners um, need a little background about so shrikar is a is a teammate uh, trains with us at yes. the karnataka badminton association and yes he is on point super disciplined i think uh, you, to, you can't fault you have to say something to him just once you know it gets done he is unbelievable okay and the final one is a fun one um so it's death by chocolate from corner house what pops oh. up into your mind three and a half because that's the most <laughs> i've eaten at one sitting three and a half pops up yeah i mean, i i, 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 I miss bangalore just sitting. because of that i miss bangalore just going to <laughs> corner house and just uh, I, i was more of a cake yeah. fudge fan uh, but death yeah. by chocolate is damn i mean it's literally death, death by chocolate is just a bigger cake fudge that's, that's <laughs> it's just a bigger cake fudge that's all yes that's one thing i miss about bangalore <laughs> for sure okay uh, so my one minds are, are little trickier okay first thing which pops okay. up your head marriage maybe one of the best things i've i've done in my life marriage okay fatherhood even better than marriage wow. yeah. yeah okay goa go never mind <laughs> never mind goa must be <laughs> no but goa it would be uh, you know i had this uh, we were supposed to have a thomas cup camp there in 2008 and a uh, few of us had gone a bit early to uh, to have a bit of a holiday uh, the first thing that pops up about about goa is uh, we had so much of fun on baga beach so uh, i think kashyap panand uh, akshay uh, sanev sanev rupesh you know uh, I, i can't i can't remember who else but 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 these i can remember okay okay the final one is next big thing in indian badminton um i mean he's already quite a big thing uh, but uh, potentially lux So, so listeners out there uh, you're talking about lakshya sen uh, he's just 19 and he is currently lakshya sen yes uh, currently th- 29 in the world and uh, i mean yeah. uh, when this is when this is recording he's actually in the second round of the denmark open and we hope that he goes uh, you know deeper in the round so i think yeah that's about it thank you so much anup okay. for uh, you know coming on to our podcast thank you, uh, it was fun you know it's been a very long time since i had a chat with you uh, but yeah it yeah. was uh, you know as fun as it is always Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you for having me here and uh, this is a super fun uh, uh, podcast you guys do. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. All the best. Cool, yeah. cool. Thank you. Please go easy on Tanvi tomorrow. Don't make her train <laughs> so much tomorrow. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> all right. All right guys. See you. See bye. you. See you. Bye. Good night. Tanvi, I mean, damn, that was one hell of a conversation. You know, going back from the bangalore days to him becoming a young coach i mean so many fond memories with anup uh, and you know me being a young coach you know just from this conversation i've learned so much you know what were your takeaways i mean you train with him every day but what were your takeaways uh, from uh, from our conversation we had today i mean yeah going back to what we were uh, talking about you know in sh- before we we had anup on uh, you know players live this extravagant lifestyle and i've seen anup you know chat about it at times uh, you know after uh, after training when we have you know a light session or something he he does say to us you know we we like our good food we like our uh, we like to have fancy cars and um, you know that's something we've just gotten used to uh, during us you know our athletic career and then to sustain that post um, post uh, athletic career is gets quite hard um you know moving into uh, f- making the transition from a, from being a player to to being a coach there is an added responsibility then fatherhood comes in life happens basically so it's it's tough on on an athlete you know um i think to all the young athletes out there enjoy your playing career because it lasts it's it's short lived and um, you know when you move into the big bad world there is there's so much so much so many responsibilities so much that um, you have to go through uh, in your post athletic life so do enjoy those those few years that you have put in all the work that you can um, and you'll achieve your dreams matlab episode ke end mein gyan to dena hi hai matlab aisa hai nahi ki matlab you go an episode without not giving a gyan so guys as i say always uchch vichar tanvi uchch vichar on that gyani note we come to an end of another episode of the millionaire athlete with tanvi and shlok uh, if you like this podcast don't forget to check out other interesting podcast on the ivm network you can listen to all of them on the ivm podcast app or on ivmpodcast.com 
you can also follow ibm on their social media handles that is at the rate ibm podcast on twitter and instagram uh, if you want uh, us to talk about anything specific uh, please reach out to us uh, on our social media handles uh, you can find me shlok on twitter and instagram with the id s h l o k h 95 And I'm T A N V I L A D nine three on Instagram and Twitter. Until then, ciao. We shall be back very very soon with another fresh episode of the Millennial Athlete with Tanvi and Shlok. Thank you guys. Sachin Tendulkar, Virat Kohli, Don Bradman, and now Cyrus Brocha. Okay, probably not in the right company. I mean, Don Bradman is Australian, but it's called Cyrus Says. A wonderful show about everything. Find the show on the IVM Podcast app, ivmpodcast dot com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hi, I'm DJ, one of the presenters of the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. I'm based in London and host the podcast along with my friend from school, Varun, who's based in Singapore, and his brother Ashwin, who's based in the US. We've all been massive fans of Indian cricket all our lives and despite living in three different time zones and having pretty busy professional lives we decided to start our own cricket podcast in March 2018 after putting out 59 episodes on our own we were delighted to join IVM in May 2019 becoming the first pre-existing podcast to be picked up by India's largest podcast network we've chatted with some awesome people had some fantastic cricketing conversations along the way But the main reason we do this every week is to have fun discussing the same cricket topics and issues that you guys are talking about every day in your living rooms. We're fans, not experts, so expect us to be honest. We really hope you decide to join us every week on the podcast.